I've been on this series and this is the last of 10 lessons on Kingdom of Heaven in your home. Heaven in your home is not something that is out there because I wanted to convey to you and I've been teaching it now over 10 lessons that we can make it a reality if we develop habits that will form a kingdom culture for our home. Anything that is trans, uh, transmitting from one generation to another requires a culture. This applies in the natural ways of ethnic uh, uh, and national and, and, and traditional uh, uh, human existence, but it applies for us in the kingdom of God too. And God wants to bless us from generation to generation. And um, this idea of having a kingdom culture is important if we understand that God's plan for us is for the kingdom of heaven on earth. And it's through families. And more pointedly, having someone responsible for it, and he is the dad in the home. I'm not going to repeat all those things because it will be quite long and I'm not going to uh, take the time to do it. You can go back and listen to all the previous nine lessons. Sufficient to say that it's, it must burn into our, our hearts and our minds by now that you exist for the kingdom. Your Christian life doesn't exist only just for yourself and God meeting your needs. He provides, no problem. But even providing of needs is always in conjunction with the purpose of His kingdom plan for you and I living on this earth. Now today, in this lesson, I'm dealing with a question that was given to me when I talked about this thing about the father, about family. What about the single mothers? What about the widows? What about mothers with unbelieving husbands? Are they going to be left out because they don't have a man, they don't have a husband, they don't have a father in the home that will be able to uh, be God's appointed agent? for the purpose of uh, his kingdom in his family? Well, I'm going to answer this question today. And I'm going to read four passages of Scripture. So please bear with me as I read them. But listen to these Scriptures and maybe you just can take it down yourself and, um, and, and, and I'm going to draw points from these to answer the question regarding single mothers, widows and mothers with unbelieving husbands. Psalm 146 verse 9. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but He frustrates the, plan of the plans of the wicked. Verse 10, The Lord will reign forever. He will be our God, O Jerusalem, throughout the generations. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 49, verse 11, But I will protect the orphans who remain among you. Your widows too can depend on me for help. That's fairly similar to Psalm 146, verse 9 and 10. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 16. If a woman who is a believer has relatives who are widows, she must take care of them and not put the responsibility on the church. Then the church can care for the widows who are truly alone. James 1, 27. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Well, these lessons, or, the, or rather these scriptures here, address exactly what, we are, what this title is about, about the singles, the single mothers, the widows, and those who are, whose husbands are not in the Lord. They are people who have a missing link, in a, in a sense. Um, but is it true that they, they are left out? Not true. Absolutely not true. And I want to draw out three salient lessons from these passages of Scripture. Number one, the Lord cares for widows and orphans. That's an important thing to note. That means there is a divine, sovereign intervention of the Lord for people who are single due to orphanage, orphanhood or, 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 widow, or, or widowhood. We must understand that God is the one who is holding himself out as a father to the fatherless. 
and he's a father to the fatherless, but he's also a husband to the widows. And so in a sense, the church ought to play its part, really, as a faith community. I know there could be shortfalls. I know that there could be neglects, uh, neglect and, and, and uh, there could be uh, 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 things that are not perfect in the life of churches around the world. But our faith must still come back to who God is and what He does for people in this category, those without fathers and those who are widows. So while the, the admonition or the, the teaching must be filtered through into churches that they should do what the Father does. Actually, there is no excuse. And if we haven't done it, we ought to repent and do this and actually keep an eye open to the fatherless and also to the widows and maybe even to those who are struggling because they are alone due to the in, uh, un, un, unbelieving spouse. We, we need to somehow step up our awareness as well as our care for these people and not just wanting to grow a church and, and to just have as many people as possible and in the city we probably like the people who are of a certain class, of a middle class and, the, and, and they're all respectable and all have families and so on. Well, we are welcoming to all these but don't forget what God wants us to remember. He wants us to remember these people for whom He Himself is, has held out that He will care for them. And if God cares for them, the church ought to care for them too. And I'm not saying this as if, oh, that's, all, that's what I've been doing all my life and so on. No, no, no. I'm telling you that I think we all need to repent if we haven't done it. And, um, and those who are believing ladies and mature ones, they ought to look after the younger ladies who are widows and single mothers. This is an instruction of the Lord in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. So in some ways, the more mature ladies should adopt the younger ladies who are in this kind of situations because you are the right people to do it. You don't expect your husband to do it because there are dangers surrounding these kind of issues here due to gender problems and... and and, and, and other issues that we can be concerned about. So the mature believers, the mothers, mature ladies, you have a part to play. Not just look after your own family, but you have a part to play in the faith community, the church, and be able to help people and be arms and legs for the Father in heaven. I've known of some of the fellows in our church who are having a heart. These are young fathers themselves and they, have, they can say that their hands are full with their own family, but I see them reaching out to orphans from a nearby school. And I'm, I'm touched by that. And I can see the benefits that these young, young, young boys that are, are, are coming to, 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 to the church community uh, benefiting from people in our church community that reaches that reach out to them and i'm feeling that this particular story or these stories that we see only in a, only a minority ought to be duplicated many times and touch a lot more people in the community with a need such as this the mom's emotional health will help the kids this is the second point here that i want to to bring out from the scriptures that we have read. You see, usually when mums are in their widowhood or their single mums, not necessarily a widow, um, they are burdened by a lot of emotional issues in their lives. And the fact that they are single is already a burden enough emotionally to them. And if not watched carefully, these burdens will actually pass down to the children. And if there is an absence of fathers in these children, the children may grow up with, a, with certain dysfunctionalities 
that may work against them in their future relationships and maybe even in their marriage later on. Or maybe in some of these, it may be causing a lot of other complexities such as gender confusion. And we can see that sometimes these issues that uh, we face in society today by young people without fathers, uh, they suffer the, the, the absence of fatherhood. The absent father is a major issue in certain continents. And they, according to their research, they actually point them, point down, pin down, sorry, they pin down the issues of the, the crime of the society and so on to one factor, the absent father. So what does it mean? The input of the kids' church, the input of the youth ministry, the input of the Fathers with regular families must have some awareness and figure out now how to work things well and keep a stability in your own homes so that you can be contributory to the others who come in into the church as single people with children and needing the help of God. But the help of God is rendered usually through human bodies and they are the people that are in the church. So that's the second point. Let me repeat. The first point is the Lord cares. Okay? And the second point is single mothers. They do have emotional burdens and baggage. And that's something that the church needs to bring some kind of counsel, some kind of help towards them. The third point is very important. As a single mother, it doesn't mean that you are totally helpless. In fact, by default, you have become the sole authority figure now over your children. And knowing first point, the first point that God the Father says that I will help you and I will care for you personally, you should see your position as a privileged position. You should rejoice in the Lord. You should learn how to not look upon your, your, your life as a lack just because you don't have a good husband or you don't have a good father and, and so on. You've got to rejoice and know that you have the best husband ever in the universe and he is your God. You have the best father in the universe and he is your father in heaven. You've got to learn how to look, after, look to the Lord and and this is not a negative thing. This is not something to criticize you or anything. It's something to encourage you, to tell you that He is more dependable. This, this God who, is, who, who, for, uh, who, who has given you spiritual authority over your children, He is the one who is dependable. You can depend on Him. And I, I have a feeling that God has special favor for people like single mothers because He listens to their prayer. He intervenes for you. And you know what? When you would not look to human beings who might have already disappointed you, then you may as well look to the Father God in heaven and begin to grow and develop your faith in such a strong way that your sufficiency is in Christ. In fact, all of us are supposed to have a faith that depend on the Lord in this way. That all of us should have a sufficiency in Christ. But you could be in a better position because of your suffering of insufficiencies, you could very well be the one that experienced more of the reality of all sufficiency being in Christ and God being the one who is all in all and Christ being the one who is all in all for you. So don't look upon yourself as a disadvantaged one. Rather, develop your faith to relate with God in a deep, special way so that you will be able to live up to something that is natural to you as a woman. Because research has shown that mothers are actually more spiritual than their male counterparts, the fathers. That's according to research. And you know what? Another research says that mothers are actually more faith active than fathers. So why do you need to live with a sense of inferiority? You don't need to. 
you have been made by God to be able to exercise spirituality that will help you to become a very, very good mother and God coming in and pointed by you, uh, pointing your children to the Heavenly Father and God willing, maybe from the Sunday school or from the youth church and, and so on, there would be other men that may be, help from, be helping your children in the faith community and all very well. But mothers who are single, do not look down upon yourself, neither should you despise yourself to feel that you are deficient. Let God be your sufficiency. So I just want to encourage my dear uh, sisters in the Lord, that you know, by the end of the day, you are still very special in the Lord and He wants you to have a special, deep relationship with you. God bless you.